So welcome. Uh, we are in the midst of a number of reports to the annual meeting of the church that usually would happen in Mitchell Hall over a delicious breakfast, but it's 2021 and we're doing a lot more online this year. Um, and in some ways that's kind of fun because we'll be having these reports and then you'll have a chance to think through what you've heard. And on Sunday at 1130 during our virtual coffee hour, folks are invited to sign in and ask questions of Brian, who gave a report on where we are with budget and finance and of uh, Shirley and Warren. So um, Shirley Mensa has been, how long have you been senior warden? We're coming up on three years, Shirley? This mm -hmm. summer? In about three years. Yeah. So um, Shirley has given a couple of these reports to the congregation. Uh, in fall this year, uh, Warren Davis was elected by the vestry as your new junior warden. Uh, Susan Norris, who has been uh, such a great junior warden for a number of years now, is terming out and is being liberated from vestry. Um, that's uh, not her words. Those are my words. They might be her husband Tom Rose's words, but uh, but Susan has done such a great job. But we just we often on the vestry decide to elect a new officer before the previous incumbent rolls off vestry. So they've got a little bit of time together on the vestry before um, before the transition happens. But Warren, we're just so glad to have you as a junior warden. And usually oh, we'd be you. in front of the congregation and up on a daze, but since we can't do that, I thought we'd sort of do an interview style conversation for your reports this year. Um, and I'll ask some questions. And then on Sunday, if folks want to ask more questions, they can sign in and ask more questions at our coffee hour. But Shirley, I thought I'd start with you. Um, your report starts by talking about last year and you titled 2019, A Year of Transition. And probably we wouldn't wanna ask you for a title for 2020 because you probably wouldn't wanna put a word in print for 2020. Uh, I, I, Ellis and I watched an online concert on uh, New Year's Eve uh, that was called 2020 Good Riddance. But what impressed me in your report, you talk about that. You talk about how 2020 it was, it was testing and it was hard, but you found goodness and in the midst of it. And I wonder if you could talk to us a little bit about, you know, what what it is that you found, particularly around our values as a congregation. Sure. Um, you know. I, I do think there might be a title for 2020 for us, for, for us as a church community. I would say 2020 was a year of testing our resolve. And, and it did, it tested us in so many ways. And I point out some of those ways in, in my report, but as a church, what really struck me was how we were able to rally around the values that we've set for ourselves. And you all have heard me say this over the last couple of years at the annual meeting um, about the, the goals, the goal setting process and the values of welcome diversity and community that we've all committed to. Um, and in reflecting on 2020 and the ways that we got knocked sideways and how we pulled ourselves back up, we did that um, really adhering to those uh, to those values, and I talk about some of those ways in my report, and that, that's that's a huge silver lining. So, 2019 was the year of transition. We had, you know, started to to we were looking at living into our goal of being a welcoming, diverse community, seeking to reveal Christ's reconciling love in our community, nation, and world. And there's nothing like a pandemic and and uh, social upheaval um, to force people to take a step back like we all had to do and think about what is really important. And luckily we're in a community where we had already uh, front loaded that reflection and we were in a position to act in accordance with those goals. And that, that makes me really happy. That makes 2020 a little bit of a net win. I don't know if that answers your question, Mike. No, it does. I, you, you pointed to some specific things like, and, and I found it interesting. You found things to note both before the pandemic set in in March, um, like our, our hosting of the screening of the film Rig, Rigged with Colrena, 
um, and and the discussions with Denise Lieberman around um, voting action and and um, social justice issues. But then you also pointed to the Trans 101 training that we held entirely virtually uh, that had you know I like 50 ish people signed in as we continued this discussion about uh, what the beloved community group has called the language of love, like how we name diversity and how we grow in our understanding and appreciation of diversity and, and the equity and justice questions and inclusion questions that come with that. And so um, I found it interesting, like, you know, you start by That's talking about it. That's a perfect example. That's yeah. a perfect example of what I just said. And, and it reflects how we were able to stick to that goal despite the pandemic. And yes, we, we envisioned a little bit of a different, uh, a, a different um, path when we started the year with Rigged, but boy, am I glad that we had that discussion with Denise Lieberman. Um, and it, but it did not, it, it didn't keep us from uh, pursuing the other goals that we talked about, like the language of love. And those are things that the vestry, frankly, as you know, we, we're talking about doing more of uh, in 2021. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, I, I found myself wondering when we were uh, doing that Trans 101 training, if this was happening in a traditional way, if we were showing up in Mitchell Hall for this, would we have had as many people signed in? And I think it's it was archived and it's been viewed a huge number of times since then. And I, I find that really, it, it's a question we, we've definitely learned some things and pivoted in some interesting ways. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit toward the end of this, I think about how some of that will come together for us. You both touched on um, you just a little bit, Shirley, but Warren spent a little bit of time in his report talking about one ministry that happened in the midst of the pandemic that couldn't be virtual, which was the garden ministry. Um, Warren, do you want to say a little bit about that and what you think that means in our life in the midst of 2020? Well, I think um, that was that was the, the place where we could be, you know, some folks could gather and um uh, be together and um, uh, have a common mission together and and produce um, food for um, another ministry that Holy Communion is a part of. And I thought that was really um, just a, a, a wonderful, I want to say synergy, a blessing, um, uh, a blessed synergy, we'll call it that. Um, and I was there uh, once at the very outset. And I was just uh, I was just amazed at how many people were coming out. I mean, uh, there was we had Anne and Jordan um, uh, leading the effort and getting people there. And I, I don't know. And they and there was uh, another gar garden bed built and all sorts of supplies organized. I, I was just really impressed. Yeah. Well, Anne Pacoxi and Jordan Nowry met in the pilgrimage class in spring of last year at new members at Holy Communion and took on our dormant garden beds that we'd had to leave dormant last year because we had water getting turned on and off during the recon reconstruction. And so we couldn't, you know, we, we couldn't water them all through the growing season. So we were worried about starting garden beds, but they resurrected the garden beds and then did the most boring thing in the world with them, which was just grow greens. Um, which I, I know we've had garden committees in the past that have done good work, but it's always been hard to just ask Trinity, what is it that you need? And they looked at the amount of soil we had and they said, well, we'll just do greens. And they did over a hundred pounds of greens that went to Trinity every week through the growing season. Um, and Scott thanks them for that as well. But it was kind of amazing to see what could happen in the midst of pandemic, two new members taking over and having such a successful ministry and inviting others into about the only way we could be in person safely and following guidance. So you, you notice a couple other things going on. Um, I mean, it's hard. 2019, as Shirley said, was a year of transition. And as we entered 2020, uh, we were still in the midst of some of the construction. Warren, can you talk about a couple of the milestones we hit with the um, next 150 campaign construction? Well, I think the the biggest milestone that I point out in my report, and you know, I'm I'm Shirley has been um, senior warden for three years. I've been junior warden for maybe three months, so there's a bit of a difference there, and I've got a learning curve to um, um, uh, make up. But um, 
to me, the biggest, um, well, there were two things. Um, one was the organ, the completion of the organ. And, um, you know, we've heard it online. And I think we all anticipate the day when we can sit down uh, and actually hear somebody playing it um, in front of us and not a recording. Um, and then the other uh, big piece was our kitchen, which um, uh, you'd mentioned early uh, at the outset, Mike, that, you know, in a normal year, we would be gathered with breakfast. And now that breakfast can actually, at some point, hopefully soon, come from a commercial grade kitchen. And we're grade A. Um, I think that's that's again that's in my um my understanding we've never had a commercial grade or you know graded kitchen period so i think that's a huge thing and i think you know maybe at some point we'll be able to have other groups come in and um um make use of that kitchen so i think that that again and and Cheyenne was uh, really uh she kept on the health uh, the county health department to come out and um you know this Keep in mind, this is in the midst of a, you know, the pandemic. So they finally came out and graded it. And, yeah, and, um, yeah the Susan Norris was instrumental in, in getting what, another huge, another uh, commercial grade um, refrigerator. refrigerator yeah. and, anyway. It took, so, it, it's, you know, commercial grade. That, that, was, that first inspection is always nerve wracking. Because uh, you never know what they're going to tell you you have to do, and there was a little bit of more work we had to do on the room in terms of just uh, some ceiling panels that needed to be replaced. That had, you know, in, in corners we didn't know we had ceiling panels and things like that. But um, but it it was nice because we knew there were we knew we were going to have to order some more appliances. Um, but we let the inspector tell us what they were, and the and the refrigerator was one, and we were planning to order it, but we waited to hear from them. They said get a commercial refrigerator. So, uh, but it. Everything took a little longer. You know, the inspection took a lot longer. The health, county health department's super busy, and Cheyenne had to stay really on top of it. Uh, the organ took a lot longer because they had all sorts of delays in their supply chain to get it to us. But by the end of 2020, we had finished out everything but the windows. The last thing that we're waiting on uh, are the stained glass windows for the chapel uh, that we're still waiting on the arrival date of those. But basically, the the construction work is finally all done. The last thing is just a little bit of art glass that'll get essentially just popped into those windows. So, and it was a lot, I, I really appreciated how much you thanked the staff because um, it took Cheyenne a huge amount of work uh, to, to get that stuff done. You also mentioned we've got a new sexton um, who you've gotten to do a, a little bit of work with, but um, it, one of the big transitions this year was Jerome Harris deciding to retire. And we held an online Zoom party for Jerome, and I'm still committed. And someday, when we can safely gather together, we will have an in-person party for Jerome. Um, but Jerome was our sexton for, I think, 19 years. Um, and so it's a big deal to transition to Zach. But Zach's brought energy and verve, and um, and Warren and Zach have been together looking at roofs already. And so, um, Warren, you identify a couple of things that we're already looking at in 2021. In terms of the building, I already mentioned the windows, but um, you name any of the other things that we're we're having our eyes on is the here. Well, um, we need a. There's a retaining wall on the west side um, that, yeah, as I mentioned, needs some um, needs some attention slash work. So we'll be um, we'll be getting to that, and then I think we'll be having the roof examined. I don't know much past that and yeah. so we have people up on top and looking at it so i think you know we've got a um, something at the bird's eye level that we need to work on and something at the foundation level <clears throat> yeah the good news is knock on wood uh a vestry not too long ago worked on the biggest roofs we have the pitched roofs um and those were replaced uh within the last and yeah, they're still under warranty i'm pretty sure but we got a lot, I and mean, we had a lot of different roofs, as we've discovered at Holy Communion. And wherever they come together is where we have to tend to deal with leaks. But the good news on this, the vestry is set as a goal setting process. Um, one of the goals is to explore solar panels. And we've got a big south facing roof over the lounge. Uh, but we discovered as talking to the first group that we want to talk to about solar panels that that 
roof is 20 plus years old and has passed its warranty. And so that occasions, you know, let's look at all the roofs and double check them. Um, but it's, you know, because you don't want to put solar panels on and then have to tear them off and redo a roof. And, you know, we're, we're trying to do it in the right order. But um, so I, I didn't know I would ever get excited about roofing, but the idea of doing roofing so you can put solar panels on is pretty exciting. We, we had a conversation in January with the vestry about goals. We, we normally have that sort of end of summer, beginning of fall. And, and we were in crisis management mode for a good chunk of 2020. And it was really only toward the end of 2020 that we felt like it was time to start thinking not just about how do we manage a crisis, but how do we plan for coming out of the crisis? Uh, and I found that we had a three hour online retreat. Uh, God bless the vestry for hanging out on Zoom for three hours. But I came away from that conversation with a whole bunch of energy. And I wonder, um, Shirley, I'll sort of pivot back to you, but um, you, you finished by talking about anticipation to all the spirit and the people of Holy Communion will offer in 2021. Coming out of the conversation we had with the vestry, what are you looking forward to in this coming year? And what are your hopes? Oh, there, there we had a lot of things that we talked about um, at our retreat. Um, I'll try to touch on each of the goals. Um, welcome. I'm really, really excited about the discussion around harnessing all of the many, many new uh, online attendees at our Sunday services. I mean, it has just been amazing. Yes, last year we were focusing on the building, uh, but the pandemic forced us to really to throw our doors literally uh, open to the world. And we've had a huge increase of people uh, from all over uh, the country and, um, and maybe even further um, interested in and attending our services. And the vestry has been talking about ways to, to try to continue to engage those people even once we are all back in person. So I'm very excited about that. And, and, uh, and I know that we can do it because thanks to you, Mike, and all the, the clergy and all the staff and the creativity that has been put into making these online services really um, meaningful and, and top-notch, really un, unparalleled. Um, so that's welcome. Diversity, uh, we talked about uh, different programs similar to the MTUG uh, presentation and developing or building on this idea of the language of love. Uh, sometimes, even when we have the best intentions, we step all in it. When we when we talk to people who have been historically marginalized for whatever reason, and I think sometimes it's just you know creating a comfort level to be able to speak in a way that um, is constructive, or to think in a way that is constructive. And so I, I look forward to uh, many other seminars like that. Um, and then in terms of our, the community, well, we've got Grace Gathering. We haven't even really talked about yeah. that and the, and the future. I'm very excited about that ministry um, and all of the other ministries that we develop. But before we get completely out of the pandemic, I, I do want to give kudos to the folks who have really um, jumped in to try to establish small groups online, yeah. starting with online. And then, you know, knowing that there's a lot of energy and excitement to continuing that even once we're all back in, in person. So we really are I guess we continue to be in a bit of a transition uh, as we continue to build the infrastructure that we're going to need to, to further expand on and live into these to these goals. So there's there's a lot going on in yeah. 2021. There's there's both a programmatic and a practical piece of that. I mean, Brian talked a little bit in the budget, Warren, you talk about it in your report about the technology and we're planning to spend, we spent more than we planned on technology in 2020 for obvious reasons, but we're planning to spend more on technology than we have historically in 2021 as well. Um, and it's interesting, I mean, I'm thinking about this a lot, the, the Vestry had real conversations about there are things that are going to stay online or at least hybrid. You know, we've had more people in the Wednesday Guild Bible study online and over the phone than we ever had in person and part of that is, you know, on a day like today, when it's snowing, we're recording this on Wednesday, I talked to the Guild today, they said, yeah, we would have canceled, we wouldn't have driven in this, but we had uh, 14 people in for Bible study on Wednesday, which was great. So there's things that we, Godly Play has been the same, there's things we'll retain. I, I think whatever happens, we will have virtual services and the ability to worship online going forward. 
we won't keep everything. You'd have to pay me a lot more if you told me I was going to have to keep doing parking lot services when this pandemic was on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be done with that. I'm gonna be done with that. But um, I'm looking forward to the day when we can worship together in person in a safe way, and it doesn't have to be in the elementary school parking lot. But in the meantime, there's been grace and there's been energy, and I'm actually finding myself looking forward to being out there in the cold and doing an annual meeting this way. I think it'll be, you know, different and crazy. There are other things we want to touch on. I there's one last thing for me, which is, and we didn't touch on it, but uh, we are now in the midst of, thankfully, to the generosity of the congregation and the incredible work of the grant committee and the support of the diocese, we're very confident in our ability to hire an assistant rector for two to three years at the minimum uh, who will, you know, steward grace gathering and do its next steps, um, continue to companion Heidi and the children's and family ministries uh, and be the second priest, uh, second full-time priest on staff. Um I am surprised, uh, honestly, by how many applications we have had. Uh, it is difficult to get clergy. Most of the clergy in the Episcopal Church are located on the coasts, and they don't like leaving the coasts. And we have had, I can't give a number or I can't give you details, but way more applications than I anticipated. Um, and so there will be a process starting in mid-February where a committee of folks will be um, interviewing a group of candidates that I'll identify um, and making a rec recommendation back to me. But I want to say that partly because I'm really proud of the work that this congregation has done. I think a reason why we've got people excited to potentially come work with us is because this is a rare commodity, a community like this with such wonderful people with real attention to community diversity and welcome and who really like each other and have found ways to be community even in the midst of the pandemic, that's a rare thing. Um, and I think Holy Communion Nights have known it for a long time. I think when I came, a lot of people talked about Holy Communion as one of the best kept secrets in the St. Louis region. Uh, but I'm proud that we're not keeping the secret. Um, I, I, yeah. So that's, either of you want to say anything more about assistant rector searches or goals? Well, I don't. I don't know that I can top what you just said. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. A, I think it's a good thing. Um, I think we've got. I mean, Shirley, I love that you mentioned you called out your sister. I'm always trying to get your sister to be part of Holy Communion, <laughs> at least because she's got such an incredible voice. But I know I've heard from folks who are worshiping with us from Ireland. That's the farthest to feel I've heard. But uh, it, it's been kind of an amazing thing to watch uh, the the who's worshiping with us come in. We never get exact names unless they write us, but. Um, we our online worship has been bigger than our in-person worship ever was. And so finding ways to continue to not be a well-kept secret, to uh, proclaim Christ's reconciling love, to try to follow Jesus in this public way, I think uh, will continue to be a challenge and a blessing. And I'm just really grateful to both of you. I, I'm grateful to get to serve with both of you as we lead in this congregation because it's a blessed place to get to do it. And I'm I'm grateful to have such great companions and leadership. So, well, I think, you know, that I, I speak on behalf of everyone, but especially the vestry, when I say that Holy Communion is very lucky to have you, oh, Mike, as our right you're, you're very kind. And it's it, lest this become just a very small echo chamber of uh, <laughs> us congratulating each other. Um, <laughs> I will remind folks that if you want to get your two cents in, now we, we'd love to have folks sign in uh, to join us in coffee hour on Sunday at 1130. Uh, and please, please, if you haven't yet registered for the annual meeting, join us at four o'clock in the parking lot. We've got to have a quorum to elect our new vestry members. Uh, but it, it, we really welcome your questions, whether in those forums or, you know, you're always welcome to reach out to us via email or otherwise. We're all in the directory. Um, but we're, we look forward to talking with you more about, um, and, and telling you more about the direction that the vestry is, um, is leading in the parish. Uh, and we're also just so grateful to work with the parish. You know, a lot of those goals came because the vestry and the stewardship committee had hundreds of conversations with folks about where folks were hoping. And it's a wonderful and blessed thing to be in a community that has done good discernment work and feels a sense of direction and call together. So, so join in, talk with us, um, ask us questions on Zoom or over email. Um, but thanks for spending the time listening to us talk about where Holy Communion is headed. 
where Holy Communion's been in 2020 and where we're headed in 2021. And thank you, Warren and Shirley, for your leadership and for taking this time with me.